This morning in our James Beard Award winning series, The Dish, we are cracking open oysters. Now it's a food, let's face it, many either love, hate, or are even afraid to try it. Now one self-taught chef is working on changing that. Jasmine Orton says learning to love oysters is like a religion, and she's looking for converts at the Urban Oyster in Baltimore. Norton tells me it's the first oyster bar owned by a black woman in the entire country. The world is your oyster. It's one of the, one of those, the most reasons. used phrases ever. <laughs> right, and to but me. But people won't try it. Right. Chef Jasmine Norton knows the raw truth. For many of us, oysters can be a tough food to crack. And here at Urban Oyster in Baltimore, she's heard it all. Nah, I can't do it. That's yeah. bougie. Yeah. yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> it's slimy. Nah, I can't do it. I don't like raw food. Yep. As a chef, what do you think when you hear those responses? I take it as a challenge. A challenge Norton taught me to take on. If I'm doing something wrong, All right. slap me back in the shape. Uh, Don't I'm actually slap me, but you know. <laughs> I'm not that kind of chef. <laughs> okay. But she is the kind of chef who isn't afraid to add a flame. I got a chef, I got thank a you, chef. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And dress up oysters to appeal to our eyes. We're building magic right now. And taste buds in these colorful creations with familiar flavors like bacon barbecue, teriyaki, and her best seller. The most popular flavor that we sell is called Cheese Louise. Here is our secret weapon. So Even what's in there? The secret. OK, I <laughs> almost got you. Yeah. But Norton says there was no secret sauce in her recipe for success. I'm assuming that you went to some fancy cooking school, right? I did not. You did not? I did not. I had school loans up, you know, up the Watu, yeah. right? Yeah. So I would go on YouTube and kind of learn my knife skills from there, right? Mm. And then my dad, of course, you know, taught me how of to shop. Course. And Norton's dad, Gregory, was willing to teach this first timer how. Twist the knife to the, there you go. You have to hear that pop. Oh, okay. Yeah. I appreciate you, coach. But prying open these half shells. Fire at special. Was it half as hard? as the doors his daughter had to pry open to start, what she says is the first oyster bar owned by a black woman in the entire country. Was there resistance being black, being a woman? Absolutely, really? all of those things. A lot of times people would come and, you know, who's the owner of this place? And I'm just like, that would be me. Norton started selling oysters as a side hustle in New York. When a health setback made her move back to her hometown of Baltimore, Norton decided to pursue her passion Full time. I started my business bedside because I had just had a surgery for a large fibroid that I had. About the size of a grapefruit? The size of a grapefruit, yes. But only a year after Urban Oyster opened, COVID caused the Oyster Bar to bottom out. I sold my TV, I sold my laptop, I mean, everything. Norton picked herself up and this year reopened Urban Oyster to rave reviews for reimagining the Raw Bar with Baltimore's best buy valves. I've been following them and the reviews have been off the chain. In part for also opening some minds about oysters. Why do you think there is so much resistance in the black community to try oysters? Excess. Excess. Right? And when I say excess, I don't mean financially, I mean experience, right? Experience, you like know? you had when you were younger. Exactly. Norton grew up eating oysters over the kitchen sink with her dad, but didn't discover the rich role African Americans historically had played in the oyster business until she began researching her restaurant. I learned that we are, in the best way that I could uh, describe it, the first responders of oysters, right? The oyster men, majority of them were African American males. Hmm. But for some reason, on the flip side of that, we're not actually the ones wanting to sit at the table after the fruits of our labor. Turns out, two members of my team had never tried oysters. My assistant, Nairi, he doesn't really like oysters, so we're gonna have to save uh -oh. one of these for him. Yeah, we certainly will. All right, Alicia, Nairi. Okay, so this is Alicia. She's always hungry. <laughs> <laughs> this is Nairi. He's always nervous about trying new foods. Yeah. So this is perfect. All right, so. I'll take the small one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, here we salute. go. Salute. Nice. Oh my God, good? that's really good. He's scraping the shell. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> she got me. So what happened to all of that oyster talk? 
It was beautiful. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> and in finding converts like Nairi, Norton has found her pearl in the oyster business. You say it's like a religious experience converting them, right? Indeed. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. We got another one in the <laughs> oyster right. industry. Welcome to the oyster religion. <laughs> Welcome to the oyster religion. <laughs> Big shout out to Jasmine and Urban Oyster. You know, she has been through so much to help build up her career. A lot of uh, rises and falls during this roller coaster ride, but what she has right now is the perfect twist on oysters. It looks so good, and it just shows what you can achieve when you stay true to yourself and to yeah. your passion. Look at what she's done. Yeah. yeah, great attention, more attention from you. That was a wonderful piece. I hope people uh, tune, uh, or, or people show up. Next, next time we're in Baltimore for a baseball game, we got to pop by. All right, works for me. You got to take your assistant, right, Nairi. Cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely take <laughs> Nairi. He's in love now. He's got an 